Uh, I'm Dan Pierce, uh, I'm professor of history at the University of North Carolina Asheville, uh, and I'm the author of Hazel Creek, Life and Death of an Iconic Mountain Community. I've long had an interest in Hazel Creek. It's an incredibly beautiful place. I've enjoyed uh, camping and backpacking and fishing in that area. And then long have had a historical interest in a place that has such a rich history and so many wonderful stories. Uh, first white settlers came in the 1830s. Moses Proctor came over the mountain from, uh, from Case Cove. And uh, interesting, one of the interesting things that he probably squatted on the land for a number of years because he didn't register a deed for about 20 years. But others followed and Hazel Creek wasn't exactly a thriving community, uh, but by the uh, 1880s, there were a number of families living in there uh, and farming the land, uh, running their hogs in the woods, grazing their cattle uh, up on Spence Field and the other mountain bogs up above uh, Hazel Creek. People tend to look at Hazel Creek as this isolated community, but pretty early on in the 1890s, industry came to the area. You had uh, a couple of mines that were developed in the area, and then you had the first uh, industrial logging that came in. Creighton Hall came in and started a, what's called splash dam logging, where they uh, cut, cut the timber into the Hazel Creek and then dammed the creek up and then flooded the creeks to wash the logs down into the Little Tennessee River, and then they hauled them down to a mill in Chattanooga. Before Horace Kephart came, it had really been in affected by industrialization, and I, th I think what Kephart saw uh, that he kind of erroneously uh, made some conclusions about was Hazel Creek at a time of decline, uh, because uh, there were a lot of people who'd come in there, and then all of a sudden their jobs are gone. But then on the heels of, of Kephart, of course, you had the Ritter Lumber Company coming in that built railroads into the region and used uh, heavy steam equipment to log the whole watershed from about 1910 or so up to the mid-1920s. And they built the town of Proctor, which had probably close to 1,000 people at its peak. And there were people all up and down Hazel Creek. And it was a thriving place, which is kind of surprising if you've been to Hazel Creek before. Uh, but then as quickly as that came, and you had this incredible boom period in Hazel Creek, it went away. When they cut all the timber, they went in, they pulled out the tracks, they shut down the mill, and um, by the late 1920s, um, Proctor was almost a ghost town. And then in the 40s, of course, TVA came in and made the biggest changes to the area when they uh, dammed up the Little Tennessee River in an amazing uh, engineering feat. It's amazing how quickly they were able to do this. Of course, it was during World War II and uh, they were damming the river primarily to provide electricity for the Alcoa aluminum plant uh, over the mountain in, uh, near Maryville, Tennessee. And then uh, what people didn't know, they were also uh, creating lots of electricity to be used at Oak Ridge. Um, there was something going on folks knew, but they didn't know what. And of course, that was the, uh, the Manhattan Project and the creation of the atomic bomb that was going on over there. But what that meant is when, when they closed the, uh, uh, the floodgates was that they flooded the road uh, into the Hazel Creek area and also Forney Creek and um, other areas, Eagle Creek, uh, on the North Shore of the Little Tennessee River. And so when they flooded that and take the road out, they condemned the people's land and moved them out of the area with the promise that they, they would replace the road. And of course that began a period of, you know, up until, well, it's still going on, of the whole promise of the, what became known as the road to nowhere. The big stories of Hazel Creek is the whole notion as a, uh, a broken promise, the whole road to nowhere thing. And I really thought about that, and that story still moves me, and I think it's important that that promise be honored. But I think at the same time, we can look at Hazel Creek and what it means to me now, uh, having been there many times and enjoyed it so much, is that it's really the fulfillment of a promise, a promise uh, that the National Park Service made in 1916 to uh, protect significant places uh, for future generations. And uh, if you look at Hazel Creek and you think about what it once was, a place that was clear cut, 
uh, a place that was uh, severely damaged by industrial logging. And now what a wonderful place it is, the beauty of the, uh, of the forest um, and the beauty of Hazel Creek itself and, uh, and just what pleasure it brings to so many people. And so I, I, I like to think of it as a fulfillment of a promise.